Konstantin Mirovic. I work as a principal front-end engineer at a company called Swiss Marketplace Group. And in addition to that, I'm core member of NGRX and Analog Jazz teams, GD in Angular, and organizer of Angular Belgrade Group. If you want to follow me on Twitter, you can find me there by searching for my handle, at MarkWestDev. So today we will talk about a new package from NGRX family called NGRX Signals. It is a standalone library that provides a reactive state management solution and a set of utilities for Angular signals. And we built NGRX signals package with some key principles in mind. The first one is to have simple and intuitive APIs. So NGRX signals APIs are designed with ease of use in mind. NGRX signals package is also lightweight and performant. So based on used APIs in your application, the participation of NGRX signals package in the final bundle will vary between 0.5 and 2 kilobytes. With NGRX signals package, we can define our state management logic in a declarative manner. It is also modular, extensible, and scalable. So we can create independent building blocks that can be composed together for extensible and scalable implementations. In addition to that, uh, we try to find some kind of sweet spot between opinionation and flexibility. So we want to have self-descriptive APIs that already provide a guidance how to define a state management logic, but in the same time, with NGRX signals, we have APIs that are customizable. And of course, all NGRX signals APIs are type safe, and this can help us to prevent potential bugs in early phase at compile time. Let's now talk about our main topic for today, Signal Store. So Signal Store is a fully featured state management solution that provides native support for Angular signals, of course, and offers a robust way to manage application state. To create a signal store, we can use a signal store function from the NGRX signals package. This function accepts a sequence of signal store features as input arguments. And as a result, it will return a dynamic service or injectable. The first base feature that we can use is called with state. And we can use with state feature to add state to our signal store. It accepts the initial state as an input argument. Then, if we want to add computed signals, we can use another base feature called with computed. Unlike with state, with computed feature accepts a factory function as an input argument. The input of this factory will be all previously generated signals for each state slice. So signal store will do this automatically for us. And then, as a result, we can return a dictionary of computed signals. To create the computed signals, of course, we can use computed function from the Angular core package. The third base feature that Signal Store provides is called with methods. And you can guess, guess based on its name, uh, we can use it to add methods to the Signal Store. Similar to with computed, it accepts a factory function as an input argument. And input of this factory will be the store instance. In other words, this store instance will contain all previously defined computed signals as well as generated state slices, signals for each state slice. And here, as a result, we can return methods. A method can be updater, as you can see here, for example, addbook, or it can be a side effect. To update the state of a signal store, we can use a patch state function. This function accepts a store instance as a first and a sequence of partial states or partial state updaters as rest arguments. And then, as I mentioned in the beginning, the signal store function returns an injectable. So then we can provide a store where needed. For instance, here in the books component, if we want to manage the local state, we can provide book store at the books component level. Then it can be injected as any other service and used in the template. Now let's talk about lifecycle hooks. So in addition to these three base features, there is another base feature that gives us the ability to execute some logic when our store is initialized or destroyed. For that, we can use a with hooks feature, 
and here we can specify what we want to do when our story is initialized or when it is destroyed. So here also, as an input argument of the factory function, we will get all previously defined methods, computed signals, and generated signals for the each state slice. And you may be wondering all this time, why functional approach? So probably a lot of you worked with uh, some class-based state management solution in the past. Me as well, I worked with component store, and then I noticed some limitations there. The first one was typing. So it's not possible to define a dynamic class property or methods that are strongly typed. Let me show you what I mean by that. So this is how we can create a bookstore by using a component store. We need to extend the base class called component store, and then to the parent constructor, we need to provide the initial state. So at runtime, what we can do, we can take each state property and generate a signal or observable for this state property, right? But if we try to access this.books or this.query, we will get a compilation error because this is not possible to achieve with TypeScript. What we need to do instead, we need to manually create a signal for each state property and then use it if we want to create a computed signal like in this example or if we want to use it in a template, for instance. The second limitation is tree shaking. So unused class methods and properties won't be removed from the final bundle. The third one is extensibility because multiple inheritance in JavaScript is not supported. I mean, we can do it, but it's not provided by default. Also modularity. So in case of component store, if we want to scale it, splitting selectors, updaters, and effects into different classes is possi possible, but it's not provided out of the box and we will not get that good development experience. Now we will talk about custom store features. And this is one of the biggest advantages that Signal Store provides. By using custom features, we can significantly reduce the amount of repetitive code for our state management logic. For instance, Every store that manages some API requests needs a request status property. So to cr we can create a custom feature and we can call it with request status. We are using with as a prefix just to be in accordance uh, with the naming convention that base signal store feature have. And to create a custom feature, we can use a function called signal store feature. This function has the same signature as signal store. In other words, it accepts a sequence of uh, base or other custom features as input arguments. So in case of request status, we want to add a property, a state property called request status that can be idle, pending, fulfilled, or error. Then we can also add some computed properties. Is pending, is fulfilled, and error. So now, instead of declaring is pending as a state property of the bookstore like this, what we can do, we can remove it from with state and call with request status, custom feature. This feature will add request status state property as well as computed properties for pending, fulfilled, and error state to the bookstore and to any other store that uses this custom feature. The next step, what we can do is to create uh, custom updaters to manage the request status state. So now, here, what we can do when we use patch state to update our state, we can use these reusable custom updaters uh, to update the request status state. I mean, in this example, uh, there is not a big benefit, a big advantage of using uh, uh, custom updaters, but if we have some more complex updating logic, creating reusable updaters can be really beneficial. All right, let's now talk about another uh, plugin that NGREX Signals package provides. It's called Entities, and it's inspired by NGREX Entity package. So if we want to manage a collection with a signal store, we can do it like this in a simple way, right? Another option is to use 
a feature called with entities, and this feature will add entity map or dictionary and uh, array of IDs as state properties, and it will also add array of entities as a computed signal. If we want to update our entity collection, we can use entity updaters that are provided by the NGREX Signals Entities plugin. One of them is Add Entity. We also have Remove Entity, Remove Entities, Set All Entities, Update All Entities. You can see the full list of available updaters in our official documentation. But you can notice one thing here. So unlike NGREX Entity Package, all these updaters are standalone function. Why? Because we want to enforce tree shakeability. So only updaters that are really used in our code will end up in the final bundle. Let's now see the signal store in action. So here I created the bookstore, and it has three state properties. Array of books, is pending, and query. Then we define the filter books as a computed property, and you can notice that we are here using signals that are generated by the signal store. We can quickly inspect its type. You can see the type of these books will be signal that contains array of books, of course, because the type of this property is array of books. And I want to show you here one more thing. For instance, if we have nested state properties, let's do something like this, foo bar one, then, of course, here we will get the full property. But if we inspect the type of the full property, you can see that it's a deep signal. It's not a play signal. So we can use it as a normal signal, of course. We can say foo like this. But the deep signal will have signals for nested properties attached to it. So if we want to take the bar as a signal, we can say foo dot bar, and you can see that bar will be type of signal number. The good thing about nested signals is that... <laughs> Thank you. The good thing about nested signals is that they are generated lazily, on demand. In other words, when we access this bar signal for the first time, it will be created. It will be also cached, so if we access it a uh, few more times, the same instance of the bar signal will be reused. Here we also have the methods. So we have a simple updater to update the query value, and we also have a method to load all books from the API. Here I used async await approach, but if we want to take advantage of RxJS, this is also possible. You can visit our official documentation and find the RxJS integration page. You can notice one more thing here. Namely, all uh, factory functions that we use with the signal store are executed inside of the injection context, which means that here we can inject our dependencies as we injected book service here. All right. Let's now try to update, to improve our example, actually, by using a custom feature and by using entities. So I'll, what I will do, I'm going to remove first this uh, full state property because we don't need it. And I'm also going to remove the array of books and the is pending flag. So now here, we can use with entities and with entities is imported from the entities plugin from NGREX signals package. As an input generic argument, we need to specify the type of our entities. In this case, it will be book. And then we can use with request status that we saw on the slides, this feature will add request, uh, request status, state property, and computed properties for panting, fulfilled, and error state. Here we need to do a change. So instead of books, you can see that now here we have is pending, we have array of entities, error, entity map, array of IDs. Here what we need is array of entities, and we should replace this books part with entities like this. The last change that we need to do here is to fix our state updating logic. So instead of using is pending like this, we can use set pending reusable updater that we created. 
and also here, we can use set all entities updater from the NGRX signals entities plugin to replace the existing collection with a new one. And we can use set fulfilled to update the request status. And that's it. All right. The last topic for today is to do a quick comparison between store, component store, and signal store. So first, I want to mention one very important thing, namely, store and component store already have integration with Angular signals. We can use instead of store or component store dot select, we can use dot select signal, and instead of observable, we will get a signal for a specific state slice. Signal store is the successor of component store. So if you're starting a new Angular project, NGRX team recommends to use signal store instead of component store, at least to manage the local state. But this does not mean that we will deprecate component store. Component store will be still maintained and improved in the future. Uh, why? Because it's widely used. According to NPM, component store is the, is the second most popular state management solution in Angular, right after global and direct store. Global and direct store is still a great choice for the global state management if the Redux pattern is preferred way of managing your global state. But if, you, if Redux pattern is not your cup of tea, you can go all in with a signal store and use it to manage both local and global state. And by the way, uh, NGRX signals package recently reached 20K of weekly downloads on NPM, and it's currently the fastest growing state management solution in the Angular ecosystem. Yeah, let's go! Yeah.